Hello and welcome to Books and Beyond. My name is Jimmy Bennett and I'm your host. And Books and Beyond is the show where we help people personify their aspirations. And today I hope your aspirations are hunger because I got a very special guest for you today and obviously we're going to do something a little different. We're going to do another cooking show. And I would like to introduce Brian Yemma. How's it going? Uh, you've probably seen him from previous shows. You'll see him on more as we come. Brian is the culinary director for McQuaid's Marketplace and Wesley, Jamestown, and Mystic. I actually work at the Mystic store with Brian, or for Brian. Um, so today, we are going to show you a couple of dishes uh, on a seafood vein for Lent and Valentine's Day. So um, I'm going to let Brian get right to it so we can get it all in. So with Ash Wednesday uh, coming up in a couple days here, um, and Valentine's Day, which actually falls on the same day as Ash Wednesday, um, I decided to do um, a codfish cake for you. Um, fish for Lent, and then, you know, fish is always good for Valentine's Day as well. Um, codfish cakes is definitely a favorite at my house, uh, one of our good sellers at McQuaid's, and uh, I thought it would be a nice little treat to show you guys how to make it. Um, one thing that I did do in the kitchen at my work that we didn't do here um, is... We got about a pound and a uh, half of um, Atlantic cod. What we do with this Atlantic cod um, is I, I like to boil it on a low simmer in water. Um, in the water before I put the cod, I'll fill a pot up with water. I'll cut a lemon in half. I'll uh, juice the lemon right into it. I'll do it over a strainer to catch any seeds or anything like that. I throw a couple black peppercorns in there and maybe a bay leaf. Um, get that to a nice simmer. You, then you just throw, you can, you can leave the cod hold. You know, if you got a pound and a half, which is what I had here, maybe two pounds, it works out to be about four cups um, when it's all set and cooked. Um, just throw that whole piece right into the boiling water and just let it simmer. You'll know right when it's done, right when the cod just starts flaking apart on its own. Um, when you get to that point, you get a little, you can either um, get like a little hand strainer and sh pick it right out of there, which I would recommend. Or if you want, you could dump it through another strainer, but uh, you want to catch that liquid because you're going to cook your potatoes right in that same liquid right. to give your potatoes some flavor. So, like I said, Atlantic cod, I started it with about a pound and a half to two pounds. Um, when it was all done and cooked, I got about almost four cups flaked here. Um, I already flaked it, but it's already fully cooked. Um, then we had our potatoes. I just use a basic red potato. It's very, very simple. Um, like I said, when, you're, when you take the fish out, leave that water on. You're just going to take a potato. You're just going to make slices, almost like you're doing a thicker um, potato chip. Just simple slices just like that. And then you're going to take those, and you're going to throw them right in that same water. You're going to boil them until, again, these are soft and they're falling apart. You're going to end up with a potato that looks like this, and it's going to be able to crumble just like that. So it's going to be a nice texture. Everything's soft. And then we have our onion. This is one of the most important parts of this codfish uh, cake, and which I think gives it some of the uh, best flavor. We caramelize an onion. Um, when, I, when I cut my onions, I like to cut the ends off of them like this. I'm going to cut it right in half. Since I want these pieces to be a little bit smaller, um, obviously peel the skin right off of here. I like to cut it in half again. Some people like to slice it this way. That's fine if you want to. I like to slice it the other way, but I cut it in half first to uh, have a little smaller pieces, and then you're just going to chop it right down. Nice thin pieces. Get that nice sliced. Put this to the side right now, and I'll show you what the finished product looks like. You're going to throw that in a pan. When you're sauteing anything, you want to get a little oil in that pan. Get that oil nice and hot first. When the oil is nice and hot, you're going to dump the onions right into it. Obviously, be careful when you're dumping the onions into it. Any hot oil gets on you, you're not going to like it, so just be cautious. Dump them in nice and slowly. Um, when those are cooking, you're going to toss them around a couple times. When they're about halfway done, uh, you will want to turn it down to like a medium, medium high heat. Right. Throw a little pat of butter in there. And with our onions, what we do is we take a little smoked paprika and we put it in there about halfway through the cooking process. That's where I get this red color from on these caramelized onions. Now to get them fully caramelized, 
around medium heat, it's gonna take about 10 minutes to yeah. get them fully nice till all the sugar start coming out of the onions like that. You can even throw a little pinch of brown sugar right into the onions, help sweeten them out and extract some of that natural flavor that's already in the onion. And you wanna be, you wanna keep moving the onions. That's one thing. Yes. If you, because they will burn, you don't want them burned, you want them just like a nice dark brown. Right, so you constantly want to mix them. And then when they're almost done, I like to throw probably, um, I did about an onion and a half, um, two medium onions, but we have very large onions at work, so I did about an onion and a half. Right before they're done, I probably throw in about two tablespoons of butter. Right. Right to finish it off. That gives it a really nice flavor. And then obviously when you're cooking anything, season. A little salt and pepper goes a long way throughout the whole process. So I would take a little and I'd season that during the cooking process. But again, you want this kind of consistency of a nice, a nice soft onion. Everything's gonna be nice and soft in this cake. And that's what it's gonna look like. So to build these onions, for television, normally I would do this in a bowl, but so you guys can see the whole process. I got a little plate here to show you how we're gonna build these and mix them up. And before I even do that, I'm gonna get my burner on here. I'm gonna get a little oil in. So when we start cooking these cakes, my oil is ready to go. You want the oil about just covering the bottom of the pan, maybe just a little bit extra. So probably, I don't know, about a half a centimeter covering the pan or a little, you know, above it. I'm gonna take your cod. Like I said, I'm gonna do it right on a plate, but this would be easier for you to do in a uh, bowl at your house. You're gonna take your potatoes. Now I got about um, three cups of potatoes, there's about four cups of cod, and I got about three cups of potatoes here. Take that, everything's gonna get broken into it, and I got about one cup of caramelized onions. That might be a little bit of much here. I probably am only gonna need about three quarters of that. So probably like three quarters of a cup of caramelized onions. You can start taking this and you can work this right in, mix this well. One thing I would caution to uh, uh, people that might have a KitchenAid at home or a, you know, electric mixing bowl, um, as tempting it is to throw it all in there and mix it like that, you do, it's not really what the ideal thing to do because what will happen, happen is you'll just have a paste. It'll grind everything down into just one gelatinous mess. You want to have the consistency of the cod. You want to have the different textures and flavors uh, coming out. So you want, it, you want it mixed well, but you want it still like kind of chunky, right? Or Yeah, no, you, want it, you want it chunky just like this. I like to yeah. see little pieces. You want to have like little chunks of potato in there. So as I have all this here, it's not binded yet together. We have Ritz crackers and we have some egg that we're gonna to use to bind. But right from here, I take um, a little seasoning, just a little salt and pepper. You're gonna salt and pepper to taste. Um, I'm not gonna do it here, but what, you, what I would normally do is when I make this, after I get it all binded, I would always do a little sample cake first, right. just to try. Then you can adjust it. If you need more salt and pepper in here, you add that more salt and pepper. So again, we're just mixing this right back into it. As it's personal taste too. There's, you know, you can make it your own. You can use Old Bay seasoning. You can use dill. Uh, a lot of different spices. If there's something that you really, really like, fresh parsley. Take a nice little handful of that fresh parsley and throw that right into that cake as well. Again, mix it right up. You can see just from the moisture of the onions and the butter and the oil and the, um, the little liquid that was left over that was in the fish, it's almost binding already. So when I add these breadcrumbs and a little bit of egg, it should, be, it should bind perfectly. So I got about four cups of Ritz crackers here. Um, it's gonna be more than enough. I'm probably only gonna end up using a cup, two cups of it. I'm gonna dump that right in. And I don't add the egg yolk until the end because sometimes you have enough moisture between the fish, the onions, that you, you, you don't even need the egg yolk always. Jim, I'm gonna pass you this egg yolk if I need it, because I'm gonna go two-handed yep. on this. All right. And if I need a little bit, you can splash that right in there for me. So now we got 
every, all the ingredients right in there. Again, I'm doing this on a plate, just so you guys can have a better visual. If you did it in a bowl, it's obviously a lot easier. Cod cakes is a traditional New England food. Um, I, I imagine they've been making cod cakes since we first even came to this country. It's a great way, it's got all the staples in it, potato, onion, fish. Um, and there's a million different ways you can make it. Uh, this happens to be one of my favorite recipes right here. So as you can see, I'm not gonna need much egg. To, to tell if you have a good cake, you take it in your hand, ball it right up. It should almost feel like a meatball, essentially. It's holding together, it's not falling apart. That's, that's perfectly bound. Just give me a good. tiny little splash of that egg in here. We don't need much, I could make a little. Perfect, that's good. All right. And again, like I said, normally I would, um, I would sample a little uh, piece, especially if it's your first time doing it. We've done this quite a bit, so we're pretty confident that this ratio and the seasoning and everything is going to be pretty good just the way it is. So now what you have here is some cakes. Now, depending on how big you want them, what you want to do, you can do little hors d'oeuvre cakes and have them really tiny, something like that. Um, I, however, brought a little scoop. Any ice cream scoop will work. And you can just take them, push them flat right into your scoop just like that. You can go and make the balls right across. Do as many as you want, as many as you can get out of here. And then when you got them a few scooped out, I'll just start with three because I think that's all we can fit in the pan. Then you know you have a consistent, all the same size cod cake. So then I take it and I just like to go form it into a little patty. Now keep in mind, if there is raw egg in here, it is important that you cook it all the way up to a temperature. You want to cook it to around 160 degrees just to be on that safe side. Um, so if you make them too thick, there's a chance that you could get them too dark in just the oil and you might have to finish them in the oven. So what I like to do is I like to make a nice thin patty just like that so that way I don't even have to go into the oven at all and we can have just a nice... Which works out because we don't have an oven. So. We don't have an oven here. <laughs> but just like you see right there you got some beautiful little cakes. Now the oil which was getting hot was almost a little too hot. I shut it down a little bit. You're gonna take that, and you can always test the oil too. If you have a little piece of crumb over here from the side, you can just throw that in there. If you hear a nice sizzle, you yeah, know it's good. going. Yeah, you know it's good. So instead of questioning whether the oil is too hot, um, usually if you see it smoking, it's probably a little too hot. But now I can take this cake. We're gonna gently put them right in here. Be careful. It's hot oil. If you're more confident, uh, comfortable using a spatula to drop them in, by all means, use the spatula. Jim and I, we're professionals. Yeah. We play with this stuff yeah. all the time. But, you and know, we got the scars to prove we it. We got the scars <laughs> to prove it. But, you know, if you're at your house, I would recommend maybe getting a little spatula, holding it like this, gently sliding it off your spatula. Always want to be safety first. And uh, when you're dealing with hot oil, it's nothing you want to play with. You definitely want to be uh, air on the side of caution. So we got... Three cakes going right there. We're gonna turn that down a little bit and keep an eye on them. We'll finish making those crab cakes in a, uh, the codfish cakes in a second. But what I'm gonna just whip up really quick just to uh, accompany these cakes is we're gonna make a little spicy mayonnaise to go with it. Very, very simple recipe. Let me put this back you to know, the I side. You know, uh, I was thinking, Brian, uh, one thing we should point out to the people at home too, if you, um, you know, you don't have to start off with all, I don't want to say not fresh ingredients, but what I'm, what I'm trying to, I guess what I'm saying here is that if, let's say you make a cod dinner and potatoes and you have leftover, um, you can use it the next day, basically the same way and make cod cakes with it. So you're not throwing out the fish or and eating cold. And it's a, it's a nice way to, exactly. to use the leftovers. And if you can see guys, 
Got a nice color on this cake right here. That's what you're looking for. So that's a good time to flip it over. And I'm gonna whip this, uh, this aioli up really quick here. Aioli, spicy mayonnaise. I got a half cup of mayo right here. Gonna put this right into the bowl here. All right. And then we got, we're gonna do two tablespoons of a hot sauce. You can use your hot sauce of preference. Doesn't have to be this one. I'm, I'm using just a Sweet Baby Ray's buffalo sauce, actually. I'm gonna do two tablespoons of that. And then I'm going to do two teaspoons of yellow mustard. Put that right here. Hide this right over here. And then get a little fork or a whisk, and you're just gonna whisk this right up. Gonna give you this nice orangey color on the mayonnaise right there. A little fresh parsley in that. Mix that in, and then just a little salt and pepper in that as well, and that's done. We can take these cakes out. Jim, you can start. I'm gonna plate these cakes right up. All right. Well, they are really, they smell delicious. All right, so I'm going to make a, a lobster Madeira. Now, this is a dish that I've had on my menus, oh, for 15 or 20 years. And, well, there we go. Um, actually, we were talking with a friend of mine one time, JR, who worked with me for very many years. And we kind of estimated that over the 15 or 20 years, we might have done up to 150,000 of these meals. And um, we're talking, we used to sell 10 or 15 a night, almost every night. Um, it is one of my favorite dishes. And it's a very nice dish for, uh, for special occasions or, well, you know, if you just enjoy a good lobster dish. But I'm going to show you how to do it. It's, it's very, very simple. All right, I'm going to start with about, oh, a tablespoon of garlic. We got the pan. We're going to keep the pan on medium heat for now. I'm going to let that garlic heat up a little. And then we're going to add... This is lobster juice that I squeezed out of the lobster. It's about two ounces. And then before that evaporates, we're gonna add about four ounces of Madeira, which might be a little heavy, but I've always been a little heavy handed with the, with the booze. <laughs> so then we're gonna get that. It's gonna immediately start to simmer. And then we're gonna add heavy cream. Now, we used to do about a cup, cup and a half per dish. So that's it. Now, this is basically what's called a reduction. When you reduce a liquid and you take out the, some of the liquid in the, and it makes it thicker. Um, heavy cream is what you want to use for this because heavy cream has a good fat content. And as it evaporates, the the uh, water evaporates out of it, it will thicken up very nicely. Now like, like the caramelized onions we were talking about, this is something that you want to kind of keep moving. Um, it's not something you really want to walk away from. And once it comes to a good boil, Smell there it already. goes. Yep. Those cod cakes smell good. I think we ought to try that. Try one of those, Brian. 
Can break one of those right open. Yep. As you can see, it'll start to come up. So you have to work it or it's going to overflow on you, which you don't want. And as you just saw, you can lift it, the pan right off the heat if you notice that it's bubbling high, just like anything, and uh, it will come down and slowly reduce. When you're All making right, this sauce, it. you're looking what for? Pretty much like to coat a spoon, correct? Yeah. Oh, that, that's what I didn't want to do, but I can turn Things it. Things happen in the bit. kitchen sometimes, yeah. guys. There you go. And if it's going a little crazy, you can turn the heat down like I just did. But eventually you'll get to the point where it won't go over the top of the pan. We used to make so many of these. Uh, JR, who was a, a really a great saute man, he would keep six or seven of these pans stacked up on a burner on high all night long. And it's ready to go. So, so they were they were, you know, smoking hot as soon as he, as soon as he put everything in. Which you don't want to do at home, but you know. I'd venture to guess that a little of that sauce right over one of these cod cakes would be pretty good. Well, that's that's another uh, that's another thing. You don't have to have this as a main dish. You can use it like for a sauce. And, you know, it doesn't have to be lobster. You can do chicken. You can do uh, shrimp, uh, fish, uh, whatever, you know, whatever you like. The Madeira is, a, you know, Madeira is a sweet uh, dessert wine. And it really, I don't know, it gives it a nice tart but sweet flavor, you know. Not tart, really, I guess, but. Oh, but you get the sweetness from yeah. From hard that. to hard to describe, but it's well, it tastes like Madeira. All right, that's starting to come along nicely. Oh yeah. Now the mushrooms, the garlic, and all that good stuff. Yep. Uh, we'll throw in the mushrooms. The mushrooms will actually help thicken that a little bit too, as it sucks in some yeah. of the uh, some of the liquid because the mushrooms are so porous. And it's important to cook those mushrooms in there because now you're going to get that mushroom flavor. Yep. In that cream as well. Now it's really starting to. And again, the options. I mean, you can really go and play with this so many ways. You could have. You know, a pasta dish, like you said, you could put it over a piece of chicken, you could do anything. The codfish cakes, you know, people think just dinner codfish cakes. Well, you could take a poached egg and put a poached egg right over a codfish cake and have a delicious breakfast when, you know, you're not, yeah. no one thinks codfish cake for breakfast, but take a poached egg, put a little hollandaise sauce right over that on top of that codfish cake. Now you have a little play on an eggs benedict that's unbelievable. Yeah. That's, you know, it's a little different than what you're, you know, thinking out of the box a little bit. And a sandwich. And a, uh, you put exactly. it on a roll, put it on a roll with them, lettuce and tomato. Exactly. All right, we're getting real close here. I'm going to crank this up just a little bit. And you can see, it's getting thicker and thicker. Oh yeah. As you notice, it's not even coming close to the top of the pan anymore, because it's as it reduces, that you're not going to have that problem. And don't ever be afraid to use a bigger pan. If you have a big wide pan, yeah, the more surface area that you have, it's covering. It, it is going to reduce faster. It's going to thicken faster. Right. Um, less apt to you know spill any off of the side. But I think anyone knows that's cooked cream or milk in their house before, you really got to pay attention to it because it goes from uh, heating up to overflowing your pan in, yeah, in seconds. Yeah, quickly. Very, very quickly. And we are almost there. You'll see it 
if you can see it, it's, it's got a brown tint to it now from the Madeira and the mushrooms, but it'll be almost a grayish, which is starting to hit right now. See a little, oh, touch, yeah. of, little touch of gray in there? That's beautiful. Now this is where it gets a little crucial. You have to be careful when you hit the certain point because if you go too far, you'll break it. If you take out too much right. of it, you know, it'll just turn the thing. So now we're going to put in our lobster meat. And you really just want to warm the lobster meat up in the sauce. Keep working it. Ah, there we go. That's beautiful. Then we'll throw a little parsley in there for color. Now, as I said, uh, we always serve this over pasta, and it is, it is delicious over pasta. But you can use this if you had smaller pieces of lobster or anything else. You can, right. you can chop it up. And like I said, if you make chicken, you can even cut chicken chunks into it. I used to like to do it with uh, uh, chicken thighs. Oh, yeah. Trim them up, cut them into little cubes, put them in there, saute them up, and follow the same recipe. The garlic, a little chicken stock if you have it. And I know I said hollandaise over this, but you do a poached egg on top of a codfish cake and then put the Madeira sauce on top Ooh. of that instead oh. of a hollandaise sauce. Now you're really talking. Now you're really talking. That, might, that sounds like a Sunday morning breakfast coming up there, uh, Brian, huh? Coming to your house. Yeah. <laughs> so there we go. That's moving along nicely. It's just about there. Well, I mean, it is pretty much there. So, I'm going to let Brian give it a taste. I'm careful because it's hot. It's all right. My mouth's been trained yeah. to handle heat. Unbelievable. Mm. You're in trying to impress your wife. Mm. Make this. Wow. It'll be a, it'll be a hit. 150,001. That was good. Delicious. Well, thank you so much. This has been a great show. I want to thank you again, Brian, and I want to thank uh, McQuaid's, uh, both for keeping me employed and <laughs> for uh, uh, giving us a hand uh, supplying us for this show. Of course. Um, we will be back again shortly in a few uh, month or two. And... Uh, We'll do another one. So for now, that's it. Thank you, and have a great day. Thank you, guys. All right. <laughs>